Hey everybody, what's up? Today I'm going to do Once Upon a Time inspired makeup and if you can't tell, the character that I'm going to be doing today is Regina. She is my favorite character of all time and I'm not going to give the story away because you have to watch the show, it's so good. So if you haven't seen Once Upon a Time, I highly recommend you do. It's on Netflix and you can also watch the newer episodes on Hulu. Tonight one of the episodes is coming on and I'm so excited for it. But anyway, Regina is also the evil queen so she has a lot of different makeup looks. So as far as Regina's makeup goes, it's pretty glamorous. It's always done up. It doesn't matter if it's in today's world, if she's being the mayor or whatever she's doing, she's always looking flawless and glamorous. So I came up with this look. It's a very full coverage foundation, very bright red lip, and some, a little tiny bit of red eyeshadow because when she is the evil queen, usually she has um, matte eyeshadow and sometimes, actually most of the time, it has like a red tint to it. So what I did was I used a little bit of my favorite red sugar pill eyeshadow and I will show you guys all the products I use in this video. I will list it down below in the description as well in case you miss it. For this look, I decided to pull in both sides of her character for it just to have fun with it. I really wanted to make this a glamorous look that's kind of like Evil Queen and Regina at the same time. So if you want to see how I did it, please keep on watching. Okay, so I got my hair pinned back. I already curled it, but I'm just kind of pinning it back so I don't get foundation all on my face and stuff. And I already applied my moisturizer slash primer. I love this stuff. It's the Smashbox Photo Finish, but it's in the hydrating version. So now I'm just going to apply some of my Makeup Forever HD. This this is in the shade 110 Ivory. I'm just going to take one pump on the back of my hand and that's all of the foundation I'm going to use. I'm not going to use any more than that. I just love this foundation. I feel like it really evens out my skin tone and I just like to blend it out with a beauty blender. I pretty much do this in all of my get ready with me videos. I noticed that Regina, they don't make her as pale when she's like Regina but when they go back in time as the evil queen, she usually is paler than her normal complexion from what I've noticed. So I'm going to go for just my everyday skin tone which is the Makeup Forever HD. I'm not going to make my skin any more pale just because I don't really need to. I find that I'm already pale enough, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to leave it and uh, leave my skin tone the way it is. But if you would like to be more like true to character, you could totally, you know, lighten up your foundation or just go a shade lighter than you normally would. So to cover up some of the redness and blemishes I have, I'm going to use my Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. I really love this stuff because it truly is creaseless. It lasts all day long. You only need a tiny bit and it's very, very full coverage. So you might want to blend it out with a brush. I have a little foundation brush here. This is a Sigma F60 and I just like to use this for I kind of like to lay the concealer where I want it first and then I'll blend it out, buff it out with either a Real Techniques brush or my Beauty Blender. So I just personally like to use a brush with this since it does have a thicker texture. Plus I just think, you know, Regina always has the most flawless complexion and the most flawless skin. So this step really helps you get more into character and it just... I feel like it just really makes the look come together because I and I really enjoy this beauty blender for concealer after you lay it on I love buffing it out with this I just feel like it presses it into the skin I know that sounds gross but it makes it last longer I swear every time I use my beauty blender with my concealer I feel like it just lasts such a long time okay so while I'm letting my foundation set in I'm just going to apply some lip balm this is the CO Bigelow mentha lip balm it's so minty and I just feel like it's refreshing and it keeps my my lips really hydrated so I just like to kind of apply this and let it soak into my lips because it's going to prep us for the lipstick later on. So now I'm going to move on to eye makeup and I'm just using a little bit more of that concealer from earlier, the Tarte one, and I'm just going to see how I have redness and I have a little bit of veins and stuff. I'm just going to apply this with a concealer brush and I'm going to set this with powder afterwards, but I I just really like to have a flawless base. So once again, I'm just laying down the concealer. Make sure you bring it all the way up to your eyebrow. If you get it on your eyebrow hair, that's totally fine because we're going to fill in the eyebrows anyway. So don't even worry about that. Really make sure you cover your dark circles. And then I'm just going to set that just on the eye. I'm not setting my face yet with my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural Powder. This is in the shade Light. So the look that I'm going for, she has a nice matte white and black smoky eye but she also has a touch of red in it so to create the base I'm going to use my Lorac Pro palette and it has lots of nice matte shades it does have shimmer as well feel free to add shimmer if you want to but for this look I feel like it really is mostly matte so I'm going to keep it that way and for the red I'm going to use one of my favorite red eyeshadows from Sugar Pill and the name is called Love Plus this is my absolute favorite red shadow so I'm going to mix these two shades. This is cream and white. I really don't want to use just white because I feel like that will look a little bit too white. 
so I'm just mixing the two together. I'm just going to take a little bit of mauve onto a blending brush and I'm just going to barely, barely apply this into my crease. And I kind of like to use this mauve shade as a little bit of a transition because if you just put straight black on the eyes, it's going to be really hard to just to make that look blown out and smoky. So I like to start off by using some of the softer browns. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this shade called Sable. It's a really nice warm brown and I'm going to just carefully apply this right there. See where I placed it? I'm just going to pop it towards the outer half and I'm just going to blend this upwards. I'm not going to smoke it out like I did with the other color. I'm just going to carefully kind of create like a C shape on my eye with that. Now for the red eyeshadow. Once again, this is Sugar Pills Love Plus, and it's just a powder red eyeshadow. It's just a primary red, nothing to be afraid of, even though it looks kind of scary. This is just a Sigma blending brush, the E25, my favorite. Um, I just want to apply this right where we put that dark brown eyeshadow. And you can stop there. I mean, you can already see it looks very soft. But if you want to go for, I mean, if you want to go full force Evil Queen, by all means, go ahead. Because Regina, she does wear a lot of red eyeshadow when she is the Evil Queen. I've seen it so many times. And then I'm just blending this out softly with a Real Techniques domed shadow brush. Feel free to use whatever blending brushes you have. Just as long as you really fade the eyeshadow, you're going to be fine. So now for the black eyeshadow, this is just a plain old matte black shadow from the Lorac Pro, and I'm just going to barely tap it. That's probably all you need really for one eye. And you don't have to add black if you feel like it's too much. Personally, I think that Regina, the red and black just screams Evil Queen Regina, so that's why I'm doing it. But if you don't want to do black, just feel free to just go with red, but I think it looks... I think when the two are blended together, it really does look like something that Regina would wear. So there we go. I really just took my time with the red shadow, added a little bit more, and just blended the crap out of it. Just really make sure to blend and blend, and then you're going to get something that looks just like that. You can add more black if you want to, but I'm going to stop here because, as you can see, the, you know I kind of have black in my crease, and I want to keep the rest very vibrant. And this side isn't finished blending out, so just so you can see a comparison, like this is not blended, this is blended. So what you want is something that looks kind of, you know, soft, like this side. So for powder, I'm just going to apply my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Light because I, I don't want my skin to look dewy and this concealer really makes it look very shiny and Regina usually has a very matte finish. She does have a highlight when she's the Evil Queen. She usually does have blush, lots of blush and highlight. So I will be adding that later, but right now we're just making sure that we have set all of our foundation and all of our concealer. Make sure, you know, you don't really have any dewy Ness going on so really make sure you set under the under eyes as well and just so our skin doesn't look too dull i'm going to apply a little bit of this laura geller balance and brighten just on my cheeks and forehead because sometimes when you make your skin look really matte it can give it a dullness that little bit of a glow it gave it just kind of brings your skin to life and we can't rule the kingdom with flat skin we got to make sure it's glow we've got to make sure we let people know we're in charge here because we are the evil queen and evil queens just have perfectly glowing skin. Now just to add some definition, I'm going to contour a tiny bit with my Body Shop bronzer in the shade 01. I really love this bronzer because it's a matte finish and it's light enough for my skin tone. I'm just going to very, very slightly kind of create, you know, a little tiny contour. This is a small step. You don't have to do it, but I just want to show you the difference. So here's what it looks like when you do it. You can see, you know, you got more of a slant on your cheekbone, which is what you want. So in this photo, she doesn't have too much blush on. It's certainly there. You can see it. So I would stop at about there because I feel like that is noticeable, but it's not overdone. Um, just make sure you don't look innocent because, you know, we're not going for the Snow White look. We're going for the evil look. So blush your heart out. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of highlight. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. It gives a nice glow to the skin without overdoing it for the highlighter. And it's perfect for this look because Regina does have a highlight. Like, you can see it if you pause it. You know, if you, if you look carefully, you can see she definitely has a sheen to her cheekbones. And I feel like the Hourglass powders are perfect for this look. Look, it's gonna give you that highlight without being highlighted. It's just gonna be like glowy and 
I love this powder. It's just really easy and you only need a tiny bit. So I'm going to stop there and we're going to go back to the eyes. I'm All right, so now on to brows. Regina has some pretty arched brows and my brows don't really naturally have that much of an arch. I just don't really grow hair right there. And her brows are also thinner than mine. Simple. I'm just going to leave this part of my brow alone. But what I'm going to do differently is I'm going to draw my arch higher than I normally would just because I'm not going to make them thicker. I'm just going to draw them a little bit higher just because it kind of gives you that evil queen look you know the evil evil characters usually always have the women usually always have very highly arched brows it just kind of makes your face look meaner so that's what I'm gonna go for first I'm just taking my NYX brow powder and I'm mixing the two shades together on my eco tools brush and I'm just lightly filling in everywhere this is what I use to fill in my brows but to create the shape I use my dip brow so there we go, that's it for the powder. I'm not gonna make them really dark just because she, I, my eyebrow hair is already pretty dark. Okay, so now to create the arch, I just put the smallest amount of dip brow. This is the shade medium brown. You can use ebony if you want to. You can use whatever color you want really, just as long as you create a really arched brow, it's gonna be fine. Sometimes Regina looks like she has black brows when she's the evil queen, but when she's Regina, she has pretty just like dark brown eyebrows. So that's what I'm going for, just dark brown today. So I'm just going to start off by underlining my brows and also I'm going to extend them a little bit because I feel like her, her eyebrows are a little bit longer than mine. So I'm just going to slightly extend them. And then with whatever is left on the brush, just run it through the rest of the brow. And see how I just kind of created that shape? I don't really have an arch, so I had to create one. And that's all you're going to do. This is also an extra step. I'm just going to take a little bit of concealer and kind of clean up my brow with it. Just because I really want them to look very, very sharp. And then just make sure you set that concealer because we don't want it moving anywhere else on our face. So there we go. You can totally see the contrast between not filling in your brow and filling in your brow. I think it looks very evil. And just make sure to accentuate your arch. It doesn't matter how thick or thin your brows are. If you do that little tiny step, you will look like an evil queen. So now for eyeliner, I'm using my Maybelline gel liner. This is just a plain black. I love this stuff. It's under $10. And it works amazingly well. It's very pigmented and it dries to a matte finish. And I just use my little angle brush this is a morph brush and so for this look I feel like it focuses more on the eyeshadow and the lashes than the actual liner so I am going to do a wing but it's going to be a very small one I'm probably going to actually just draw the wing first sometimes I like to do this method I draw the wing first because then um, I make sure that's the focal point of the wing liner so I'm just going to follow the line of where the eyeshadow ends right there so and then I'm just going to bring it back very slowly and that's pretty much all of the eyeliner I'm gonna do I'm just gonna fill this in really quickly I'm not gonna do it really thick because I think this look focuses like I said more on the eyeshadow than the than the liner so I'm also adding a little bit of this Milani liquify black pencil in my waterline and I'm just taking a pencil brush and I'm very lightly softening up the liner making it come onto my lower lash line and of course I'm going to pop on some mascara I'm just gonna pump my lashes a few times give them a really good curl because we are gonna go in with falsies and this is the Shu Umera eyelash curler I love this because it really you don't even have to think about curling your lashes like you can have a conversation and curl your lashes when before I, on my eyelash curlers, I had to be like straight up only focusing on curling my lashes. And these are the lashes that I'm going to apply. They are the Fright Night Mesmerizing Lashes. They have tons of different looks to choose from. I chose these because I instantly thought of Regina when I saw these. They just have a really spiky yet fluttery look to them. And I just think it's the perfect balance between, um, you know, Regina and the Evil Queen. It looks So just take a pair of scissors and trim off the excess. So there we go. I just trimmed it down and I'm going to apply a little bit of this Duo Lash Adhesive and let it sit for like 30 seconds before you apply it. Trust me, it'll make your life so much easier. So the glue is dried. I'm just going to pop it on my lashes. I love to use tweezers for this. I don't like just using my fingers. I find it's really difficult. So if you get a pair of tweezers, it's super easy to just pop the lashes right on. So make sure I'm looking into my mirror because I need to see what I'm doing. And I just pop them ever so slightly on. 
and then just adjust it. So that's it for the lashes, and I did apply a little bit of the Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara, my bottom lash line as well. I already applied a little bit of this before I put on the false lashes, but you could pop on a little bit more if you want to. Go for as much mascara as you want. Now for lips, I'm going to line them just because I want a really sharp, precise line. Regina always has very sharp lips. This is the NYX Lip Pencil in the shade Cabaret. I'm just going to follow the natural line of my lips. If you want to, you can overdraw your lips. Regina does have very full lips. Um, I'm just going to keep mine natural. Though. And now for lipstick, I'm going to mix these two shades together. This one is called Dark Side, and it's a really deep, kind of like a burgundy red. I really like this shade because I kind of feel like it ties in very well with the eyeshadow, so I'm going to apply this and mix it with just the slightest bit of Diva, which is a matte finish lipstick. So this is what Diva looks like. It's also a very deep red. This one is more of like a blood red, ox blood. I really love these two colors, and I just couldn't decide between the two, so I was like, why don't I just mix them together? There is the dark lip color. I feel like this just screams Evil Queen. I love these two colors put together. I think they're absolutely perfect. And if you want a bright red lip, definitely go for MAC Cherry Pencil. I love this shade. It's matte, so if you want to do matte lips, just line and fill in your lips with that. But I want it to look very creamy and very saturated, so I'm going to go ahead and wear this lipstick. This is a Laura Mercier lipstick, and the shade is called Red Amour. Alright, so there you go. That's what the bright red lips look like, and I really love this because I feel like Regina, when she's in her more of a Regina character, she goes for really saturated, glossy lips. So I feel like if you want to, you know, if you want to go the route I did where you kind of dress like Regina. I think this would be perfect for you. And if you want to go Evil Queen, you could definitely go for the dark vampy lips. And for the outfit, in case you guys really are going to dress up as her for Halloween, I went for this black dress. It's like a silhouette, nice fit. It's just a very fitted dress, but it has like a satiny um, feel to it. And it also has this pattern. I'll stand up and show you guys. It has like this pattern to it on the bodice. So here is what the top of the dress looks like. It's very fitted. I really like it because it accentuates the waist. And Regina usually wears dresses that are nice and fit or she also wears blazer so if you have like a blazer and a pencil skirt that would also be great for Regina um, for Evil Queen you can do anything that's like dramatic with a cape and you know a collar or something and that would look great for the Evil Queen but for Regina I just thought this dress was perfect and I already had it in my closet so I popped it on for this tutorial I think I got it at Charlotte Russe I got it like a couple years ago when I was gonna go to a Dino on T show so um, yeah I just thought it would be nice for this look and I just love Regina I think her costumes are the best her makeup is always my most favorite makeup on the show. I just adore her character. All right, so that's it for this Regina slash Evil Queen makeup tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once Upon a Time is my favorite TV show, and tonight the second episode comes on, and I'm probably going to upload this later on in October, so who knows what episode will be on by the time you guys see this, but I am so excited to see tonight's episode. I can't believe the whole Elsa and Anna thing. I really just want to see what Regina is going to do to uh, Emma, though, because I think she's pretty pissed about the whole bringing back Robin Hood's wife thing like oh OMG like she totally just ruined their little thing going on he pretty much like dumped her in the last episode so I was like ooh every Sunday night I get really excited because Once Upon a Time is my favorite TV show and I plan on doing Emma's look next so um, I don't have a blonde wig or anything I'm not gonna do anything with my hair but um, I plan on doing Emma and also Snow because those are my other two favorites um, comment down below let me know what you think is gonna happen in the season let me know who your favorite character is what you want to see next Emma or Snow because I'm so tied I love both of them um and yeah so I'll let you guys go now I hope you enjoyed this and as always thank you so much for watching